Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition, by Gary Dessler. Chapter 2, Equal Opportunity and the Law. Section 1, Big Ideas. Did you know that a jury in New York recently ordered Walmart to pay Patrick Brady $7.5 million for violating the Americans with Disabilities Act? Walmart hired Brady who has cerebral palsy, to work as a pharmacist's assistant. But after just one day, the store reassigned him to collect carts and pick up trash. In another case, Boeing recently agreed to pay up to $72.5 million to settle a suit by female employees who claimed they were paid less than men. And Morgan Stanley settled a similar suit for $54 million several months later. In fact, Hardly a day goes by without reports of equal opportunity-related lawsuits at work. Yet, legislation barring discrimination is nothing new. For example, the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution states that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, and the Thirteenth Amendment outlawed slavery and is used to prohibit racial discrimination. But these two amendments were passed during the 19th century, what kinds of legislation have been passed since then? Let's look at some of the equal employment opportunity laws that were passed from 1964 to 1991. Civil unrest among minorities and women during the early 1960s prompted Congress and presidents to take dramatic action concerning equal opportunity employment. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act was one of the first results. Title VII amended by the 1972 Equal Employment Opportunity Act, states that an employer cannot discriminate based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It bans discrimination on the part of most employers, including all public and private employers of 15 or more persons. In addition, it covers all private and public education institutions, the federal government, and state and local governments. This law also established the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or EEOC, to administer and enforce the civil rights law in employment settings. The commission's five members are appointed by the president with the advice and consent of the Senate, and there are also thousands of staff members in offices around the country. In addition to Title VII, various U.S. presidents have issued executive orders expanding equal employment in federal agencies. The Johnson administration issued executive orders 11246 and 11375. These orders don't just ban discrimination, they also require contractors to take affirmative action to ensure equal employment opportunity for those who have suffered discrimination in the past. These orders also established the Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs to implement the orders and ensure compliance. For example, it reached a settlement with an aviation contractor to pay over $240,000 to settle claims that female and African-American employees were subjected to a perversely hostile work environment. In 1963, Congress passed the Equal Pay Act. This law makes it unlawful to discriminate in pay on the basis of sex when jobs require equivalent skills, effort, and responsibility to perform equal work under similar working conditions. In other words, men and women who perform substantially the same job in terms of skill level, education needed, and work environment must be paid comparable salaries. Another group, workers over the age of 40, gained extra employment protection with the passage of the Age Discrimination in Employment Act of 1967. For instance, in the court case O'Connor v. Consolidated Coin Caterers Corporation, the Supreme Court held that an employee who is over 40 may sue for discrimination if he is replaced by a significantly younger employee, even if the replacement employee is also over 40. In addition, in 2004, the U.S. Supreme Court found that this law does not protect workers under 40 from being treated worse than older workers. This act is a favorite among lawyers since it allows jury trials and double damages where willful or intentional discrimination is proven. In 1978, Congress passed the Pregnancy Discrimination Act as an amendment to Title VII. This act prohibits using pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions to discriminate in hiring, promotion, suspension, or any terms or condition of employment. 
Also, if an employer offers its employees disability coverage, then it must treat pregnancy and childbirth like any other disability and include it in the health plan as a covered condition. In other words, if an employee misses work for a knee surgery and that surgery is covered as a temporary disability, then any female in the company who becomes pregnant must also have her pregnancy covered as a temporary disability, including insurance coverage and time off. From the late 1970s to the early 1990s, no notable discrimination legislation was passed. However, several Supreme Court rulings in the 1980s had the effect of limiting the protection of women and minority groups under equal employment laws. This soon prompted Congress to pass a new Civil Rights Act. So, in 1991, George H.W. Bush signed the Civil Rights Act of 1991. The effect of this legislation was to roll back equal employment law to where it stood before the 1980s decisions, and in some respects to place even more responsibility on employers. A final piece of equal employment legislation we'll look at is the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, passed in 1990. It bars employers with 15 or more workers from discriminating against qualified individuals with disabilities with regard to applications hiring, discharge, compensation, advancement, training, or other terms and conditions of employment. It also says employers must make reasonable accommodations for physical or mental limitations unless doing so imposes an undue hardship on the business. Examples of reasonable accommodations include access ramps, special computer setups, and office furniture. The ADA does not list specific disabilities. Instead, EEOC guidelines say someone is disabled when she has a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities. By now, I hope you can see that equal employment opportunity legislation is aimed at ensuring that anyone, regardless of race, color, disability, sex, religion, national origin, or age, has an equal opportunity based on his qualifications. Interestingly, demographics and globalization are eliminating the original motives that once drove equal employment legislation. In other words, employers now have little choice but to willingly push for more diversity. White males no longer dominate the labor force, and women and minorities will make up the majority of labor force growth over the foreseeable future. So, employers are increasingly striving for racial, ethnic, and sexual workforce balance and harmony. And, as the Wall Street Journal recently put it, as companies do more and more business around the world, diversity isn't simply a matter of doing what is fair or good public relations. It's a business imperative. That's the end of this section. Section 2, Practice Questions. Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true, false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question 1. Title Seven of the 1964 Civil Rights Act prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, and A. National origin, or B. Age. The answer is A, national origin. Specifically, Title VII bans discrimination against any individual with respect to compensation, terms, conditions, or privileges of employment because of the individual's race, color, religion, sex, or age. Question 2. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 does not cover certain conditions such as pyromania, compulsive gambling, voyeurism, and A, homosexuality, or B, cosmetic disfigurement? The answer is A. Although homosexuality is protected under certain state-specific equal employment opportunity legislation, it is not currently protected under any federal legislation. Question 3. Examples of bona fide occupational qualifications include religion, sex, and A, race, or B, age? The answer is B, 
Age. A bus company's maximum age hiring policy for bus drivers is a bona fide occupational qualification, for example. The court said the age limit was necessary to ensure the safe transportation of passengers. Question 4. An effective diversity management program provides strong leadership, an assessment of the situation, and A. Diversity training, or B. Ways to assimilate employee differences. The answer is A. Diversity training might include having employees discuss with expert trainers the values of diversity and the types of behaviors and prejudices that undermine it. Okay, let's try a few true-false questions. Question 5. Equal employment opportunity and affirmative action are identical, true or false? The answer is false. Equal employment opportunity aims to ensure that anyone, regardless of race, color, disability, sex, religion, national origin, or age, has an equal opportunity based on her qualifications, while affirmative action goes beyond this by having the employer take actions to eliminate the present effects of past discrimination. Question 6. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 established the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to administer and enforce civil rights laws. True or false? The answer is true. The EEOC consists of five members appointed by the President with the advice and consent of the Senate. Each member serves a five-year term. Question 7. In the Albemarle Paper Company v. Moody case, the court provided details about how an employer should validate its screening tools, such as pre-employment tests. True or false? The answer is true. The Albemarle case helped clarify how employers could prove that the test or other screening tools are related to or predict performance on the job. Question 8. The Civil Rights Act of 1991 prohibits jury trials. True or false? The answer is false. The Civil Rights Act of 1991 permits victims of intentional discrimination, including sexual harassment, to have jury trials and to collect compensatory damage for pain and suffering, and punitive damages in cases where the employer acted with malice or reckless indifference to the individual's rights. How are you doing so far? Ready for some short essay questions? Okay, here's the first of two. Question 9. What are the three main ways an employee can prove sexual harassment? The three main ways an employee can prove sexual harassment are quid pro quo, hostile environment, and hostile environment created by co-workers or non-employees. Last one, question 10. What are the four basic approaches to proving adverse impact? The four basic approaches to proving adverse impact are disparate rejection rates, restricted policy, population comparisons, and the McDonnell-Douglas test. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms. Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it, and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission? The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission was created by Title VII and is empowered to investigate job discrimination complaints and sue on behalf of complainants. Question 2. Define Affirmative Action Affirmative action is a series of steps taken for the purpose of eliminating the present effects of past discrimination. Question 3. What is the Vocational Rehabilitation Act of 1973? 
the Vocational Rehabilitation Act of 1973 is the act requiring federal contractors to take affirmative action for disabled persons. Question 4. Define Uniform Guidelines. Uniform guidelines are issued by federal agencies charged with ensuring compliance with federal equal employment legislation. They explain recommended employer procedures in detail. Question 5. Define sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is harassment on the basis of sex that has the purpose or effect of substantially interfering with a person's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Question 6. What is adverse impact? Adverse impact is the overall impact of employer practices that result in significantly higher percentages of members of minorities and other protected groups being rejected for employment, placement, or promotion. Question 7. What is a good faith effort strategy? A good faith effort strategy is an employment strategy aimed at changing practices that have contributed in the past to excluding or underutilizing protected groups. Question 8. Define reverse discrimination. Reverse discrimination is a claim charging that white males are discriminated against due to affirmative action quota systems. Question 9. What is the Pregnancy Discrimination Act? The Pregnancy Discrimination Act is an amendment to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act that prohibits sex discrimination based on pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. Last one, question 10. What is the Vietnam-era Veterans Readjustment Assistant Act of 1974? The Vietnam-era Veterans Readjustment Assistance Act of 1974 is an act requiring that employers with government contracts take affirmative action to hire disabled veterans. That's the end of this section. Section 4, Rapid Review Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question 1. What is Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act? Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act is the section of the Act that says an employer cannot discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin with respect to employment. Question 2. What is a bona fide occupational qualification, or BFOQ? A bona fide occupational qualification is a requirement that an employee be of a certain religion, sex, or national origin where that is reasonably necessary to the organization's normal operation. Question 3. What is meant by the term disparate impact? Disparate impact means that an employer engages in an employment practice or policy that has a greater adverse impact or effect on the members of a protected group under Title VII, rather than on other employees, regardless of intent. Question 4. What is the Americans with Disabilities Act? The Americans with Disabilities Act is the act prohibiting discrimination against disabled persons and requiring employers to make reasonable accommodations for them. Question 5. What are the three equal employment legislation guidelines resulting from the Griggs v. Duke Power Company case? The three equal employment legislation guidelines are that discrimination by the employer does not have to be overt that employment practices must be job-related, and that the burden of proof is on the employer to show that hiring practices are job-related. Question 6. What is the Federal Violence Against Women Act of 1994? 
the Federal Violence Against Women Act of 1994 provides that a person who commits a crime of violence motivated by gender is liable to the injured party. Question 7. What is quid pro quo sexual harassment? Quid pro quo sexual harassment is harassment in which sexual favors are solicited or demanded in exchange for employment actions, such as promotions, benefits, or work assignments. Question 8. What is the four-fifths rule? The four-fifths rule is a means of determining disparate rejection rates, where a selection rate for any racial, ethnic, or gender group that is less than four-fifths or 80% of the rate for the group with the highest rate will generally be regarded as evidence of adverse impact. Question 9. Define diversity. Diversity refers to the variety or multiplicity of demographic features that characterize a company's 